Interested in a budget-priced 4K action camera? The Cam Park V30 is one to consider. I first used a Cam Park brand action camera several years ago and did a review of the ACT 74 model. In the three years since the ACT 74 first came out on Amazon, there have been a bunch of 4K budget class action cameras in a variety of price points. The V30 is one recent example. Before we jump into the review, please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Likes and subscriptions are important to small channels like this one, and I appreciate your taking that extra second to make those clicks. Speaking of clicks, be sure to click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. At the $100 price point, the Campark V30 was released in late 2019 and includes 4K native mode recording. Current coupon promotions bring the price down to about $80. Some of the key features include native 4K at 30 frames per second, electronic image stabilization, touchscreen controls, a Wi-Fi app, and selectable wide-angle lens choices. Let's take a look at what you get and some of the key controls in the menu system. One of the interesting things about many of the budget action cameras, and it's certainly true of this V30 from Campark, is that they come with a great set of um, accessories. You get a three or four hundred dollar um, action camera and you get the camera and here uh, you get a lot of support equipment. So let's look at that here just real briefly. First is the waterproof case. You'll notice in the waterproof case it's got a solid background right here uh, and it mounts on one of these little clip type springs um, and then it can be screwed off using the screw and uh, mounted alternatively for example you could use this little connector to connect to that waterproof case and then put it in a socket, um, a quarter by 20 socket. Or you could use this little uh, connector uh, instead of the clip, which has a quarter 20 socket there. So there's a lot of alternative ways and the instructions show a lot of the combos to put it through. This is a bicycle clip. Uh, this is a bit of an extender. You could use it with a J-clip such as this. Uh, this J-clip would fit in here on either one of these two uh, gummed. Uh, you know, it's got the adhesive tape on the back. Uh, and then you'll notice with, with little clips like this here, the, uh, the hole is pointed 90 degree difference. And so these you can put in there uh, and you can combine them, frankly, uh, to provide you with a way to get the proper angle for whatever it is you're trying to uh, record. These are um, straps if you were going to try to um, strap the camera down through these, these holes here that you see in these particular plates, uh, and then some Velcro ties. Here are some other um, things to secure. You can see the little blue there is a, is a lens cloth, microfiber cloth. Here are a couple of zip ties if you were going to um, try to tie the thing down to something. And then there's a metal lead there that you can use as a tether to connect the camera uh, to something more secure. So if you had this all mounted up uh, on your bicycle, you could tie the tether to the bicycle handlebar. So if it got knocked free, it would just dangle from the handlebars and not uh, be lost on the trail. Here is the um, cable for the charge device. It's a micro USB charge. It's a double charging uh, little cradle and then there are two batteries. This is an extra back for the waterproof case. You notice this has got some uh, holes in it here and uh, those holes are to allow you to get some of the sound that is coming around it while you keep the camera in the protective case. So obviously it's not going to be waterproof but it would be splash proof and it would provide some protection if you were in a particularly rough environment and you didn't want to uh, risk uh, scratching the lens or otherwise breaking your camera. So um, those are the accessories that come with the kit 
comes with a little bit of paperwork. This is a little invitation to write a review, and it gives you some instructions on how to do that. And then here is the owner's manual for the V30 4K action camera. And this particular manual is entirely in English, and so this is just a single language manual. It's not, you know, three pages of instructions times five different languages. It's all about this particular uh, action camera, and it's fairly comprehensive. Uh, for those of you who have seen other action cameras, the the various aspects are going to be familiar to you, but if you're new to the action camera world, uh, this will give you a good explanation of what's uh, going on with the camera and how to get the most from your camera. So as we look at the camera here, we've got the front face, it's got the lens and the on off button there at the front. And those three little slots are for the speaker uh, that comes with the camera. Obviously not very good, but it's enough to hear if your sound is on or off, for example. At the top, we've got the microphone right over here, and we've got a select button or the shutter trigger right up here. So starting and stopping or taking pictures happened here. Uh, on this side, we've got up and down. And so if you are in the menus and you choose to use the buttons to maneuver instead of the touch screen, or if it's in the underwater case, for example, uh, you can move through the menus here and then use the button here on top as your select switch. Here on the bottom is the door to the battery. I'm not going to open that up in that uh, got to reset the date and time when you pull the battery out of this camera. And it's got a quarter 20 so uh, socket here to mount on a tripod or other type of mount. On this side, it's got the uh, various connectors. There's a uh, micro HD output, which will allow you to use this in playback mode. And it also transmits out HD. Uh, when it's on but not recording. You can't record and output HD at the same time. This is a micro USB slot and the SD card slot is right below it. Then on the back of the camera we've got the touch screen and uh, that's how we're going to be manipulating the menus. So let's take a look at those menus right now. So here's the back screen of the camera when you turn it on. Uh, the little triangle there, or the play button, will, if you press it, it'll take you to your gallery and allow you to select a video to play. Uh, you can see that the EIS is on with that little icon there. It's in video mode. Uh, the amount of time available uh, for recording at the resolution you have selected. The SD card is there. The mic is on and the battery is just about full. You also see here at 4K video, that's the video resolution that uh, the camera is currently set to, so it's easy to know what that is without going into the menus. By pressing the gear, you move into the various menus and you've got uh, video men selections, you've got photo selections, you've got general selections, and then off. And so here in the resolution, you press the resolution and you get a whole bunch of resolutions all the way from 4K 30 down to 720 120. Uh, press this back arrow to move back. The image stabilization is on. As you can see, there's a gyroscope that I currently have off. Um, the video encoding, you can choose either uh, H.264 or H.265. You can select slow motion uh, and you can pick either the 1080 90, which would give you kind of a three to one slow motion, or uh, 720p at 120 frames, which would give you four to one slow motion. Make some choices for still photo, um, time lapse interval, and then loop recording time still photo time, for example, we'll look at that one. Um, three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. Whether you have your external microphone on or not, uh, when this is on, the, uh, the internal microphone does not work, whether there's a mic plugged in or not. Um, audio record is on, I want the mic on, and then the exposure controls are there. So you can make some uh, uh, ISO changes, white balance changes, um, and where you meter, whether you just take a, a, a scene average uh, or whether you're going to uh, do a center or a spot metering. Now if we go into the camera settings, again you can set the resolution uh, 20 megapixels, 12, 8, and so forth. 
uh, the amount of memory you want to use depends on how you're going to use the photo actually. Uh, so pick a, um, a megapixel selection that will match how you plan to use the photo. There's no reason for 20 megapixel photos if you're going to put them on the web, for example. In the burst photo mode, again, you're setting the megapixels for your burst photos. Um, delay timer, if you're going to set a timer and then get in the picture yourself or get something else in there uh, while the timer's is counting down. Photo timer, burst photo, um, it'll give you a choice between three, five, and ten shots per second. So that might be kind of fun if you were um, uh, taking a photo of somebody hitting a tennis ball or hitting a golf ball, that kind of thing. So we can set some scenes, uh, whether it's auto or light painting. I do generally don't do scenes in the camera. If I'm going to do scenes, I apply them in post-processing. Uh, Exposure values, you can up the exposure or lower depending on the brightness that you have. The exposure time, ISO white balance, and we were down in this area once already. So there's quite a few camera uh, management uh, variables that you can deal with here in the menu system. Now in the overall selection, you can set the sounds, distortion, calibration, that's lens distortion. Uh, here's kind of cool, this camera has uh, three choices of width for the uh, wide angle lens. Uh, the wider the angle, the more the curvature you're going to see on things like horizons and that kind of thing. So you can change the angle that the lens is recording here on this choice. Uh, and so that would be worth uh, playing around with. You can turn the driving mode on if you want to use this as a dash cam. Uh, the wide dynamic range is probably good uh, for getting the best uh, color that you can. You can give it a command for automatically turning off the power so you don't run down the battery. Same with the screensaver. Choose the language, choose the date, set the date and time. All of those here are here in this main um, setting. And then you can choose to put a date stamp on the video itself. Power frequency is to choose between 60 or 50 hertz, 60 in the United States. So if you were in a room with fluorescent lights, you could set the 60 cycle uh, and you minimize the strobing effect of those lights. Uh, give you a chance to format the car, do a factory reset, and then it'll tell you about the firmware that's installed in the camera. So that's what we've got here uh, in the menus. It's really pretty comprehensive for a little teeny camera, and it's worth taking a few minutes to figure out uh, what does what and um, what works best for you. So I know you're really interested in what this camera's video outputs look like. In this series of clips, we'll work through the various choices. Since I'll be rendering this video in 1080p, I'll give you my honest opinion of the 4K video and post a short separate video with 4K clips for you to examine. If you have a 4K screen such as a 4K TV or your smartphone, I'll use the camera's mic to describe the settings for each clip. Let's take a look. 1080p, 30 frames per second on the cam park. EIS is on. This is coming out of the camera at 1080p by 60 frames per second. The EIS is on. 1080 
Here are a couple of comparison clips using the Acaso V50 Pro. The V50 Pro is one of my favorite budget action cameras. Looking at the clips side by side may give you a bit of insight as to what you can expect. So I've got both cameras, the Acaso V50 Pro and the Campark V30 side by side on a little bar. I'm speaking to both cameras from behind. EIS is on and this resolution is 1080 by 60. So in this clip we're walking down that same path. The other clips have been taken on and we're using the external microphone that gives you a chance to have a sense of what the external mic sounds versus how the internal mic sounds. Note that the lav mic is a micro USB that only works with the Campark V30 or its twin, the Acaso V50X. The Campark branded mic is $20 while the Acaso branded mic is $10. I'm using the V50X mic in these tests. Other micro USB mics won't work, so beware. Lots of YouTube videos try to grab your attention by asking whether this or that budget camera is the latest GoPro killer. Let's get real. A $100 camera isn't going to output the same quality of video as a $300 camera. It just isn't going to happen. At the same time, Budget cameras like the Campark V30 can produce very nice video that will meet the needs of lots of folks who either don't want to or can't afford to purchase a $300 action camera. There are several cameras at this price point that produce videos that exceed the bar for solid video output with reasonable audio. This budget camera from Campark is certainly one of those. Speaking of audio, most action cams don't produce great audio. If you need solid audio, you should probably be recording a separate audio track into a small digital recorder or your smartphone using an external mic. So what were my big pros for this little action cam? First, I'm impressed. The video was good and would be even better with the camera mounted on a gimbal. Its low price means you can toss it in a suitcase and bring it along on vacation. You won't have to worry too much about taking it out on activities such as beach days, diving, biking, or strenuous hiking trails. The V30 has a broad selection of resolutions and frame rates, including 4K by 30. You can also set the lens angle to best suit your needs. I used a fast SD card and didn't notice much frame dropping in the 4K resolution. The EIS makes a difference in video smoothness, but can't cancel out big moves. Since the camera is so light, it's hard to hold it steady. As with most action cams, if really smooth video is a requirement, you'll need a gimbal. A reasonably priced gimbal will cost about the same as the camera. The menus are easy to manipulate and the touchscreen is very responsive. Buttons can control the menus when the camera is in its case. Speaking of the case, the V30 comes with a comprehensive set of accessories that will make getting started using your new action camera very easy. If you're interested in better understanding of your action camera and what some of the menu items mean and how they increase the usefulness of your action camera, consider getting my book, The Action Camera Handbook. It's available on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below. Again, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications. Thanks for watching.